today's video is a start to finish tutorial on the main screen and model adjust tab. So let's get started. First thing we'll do is go over the main screen. We'll start top left and work our way down to the bottom right. You will notice here it says IX tutorial. That's where you label the name of your model. The way that you do that is you push and release and you get turn off RF hold to proceed. This allows you to go into the model utilities. Now you can push the button on the model. Here you can change the name of the model, the monitor channel count, category, favorites, and my list. Also where you can change the image for this model. If you hold down the button, this brings up your model select. So that allows you to change between models. You tap the model you want and then you hold proceed. And it will change that model. Next to that, you will notice that you see the SD logo with the dots scrolling across. That means the SD card is recording the flight log and data as it's transmitted to the radio. Here's your total model timer. So, this is how long you've had this model active on the radio. Here's the protocol that's being received from the receiver. In this case, it's DSMX. 56% battery life. Then you got the little battery indicator, and here's the voltage. Here's your signal. Top right is your volume for the main audio. You tap that, a little slider will come up, and you can adjust it up and down if you want to mute. You just push the red button at the bottom. Here you've got your layouts from dashboard, monitor, telemetry, and flight log. And there's some other as you go down the line. Two ways you can access these menus. One, you can push up at the top and just select the one you want. You notice I can scroll over a bunch at one time. And let's say I wanted to go to Vario. Just click on that. It'll jump straight to it. Another way is you can scroll down here in the information area. This square with the four corners is the dashboard extender. When you push that, it will remove some information. So you notice that the icons actually get bigger and it takes some of the information away. Here you've got your bind button, your throttle percentage when you raise it up. It'll show more, lower it down, it'll show it lower down. Trims in the middle. You actually have separate graphic interfaces for the trims. And what I mean by that is at the top where you've got the left and right trims, you actually have monitors for those trims on the screen. And then your other trims down at the bottom are here. reason why I bring that up on some of the other radios, such as the DX and the NX, whenever you use these digital trims at the top, it will pop up R trim or L trim next to these, and those will become, for a small period of time, the values will show for those switches. So this one actually lays it all out. You've got two timers over here, one by default. If you push the timer button, It'll bring up some information so you can change around different things. You've got timer 2, and then you've got integrated. That shows how long the radio's been on, and then also shows the time that you've been on the model, just like it does up here. Let's say you want to clear out the timer. You just hold down on the time, and it'll say time reset, and that's how you reset the timer. Down here at the bottom, let's look at model adjust. We have our servo set up. It works the same way as the dashboard menu. When you want to change the different ones, you just click at the top to change the different places. First one is servo reverse. So if you want to change the direction of the servo operation, for example, the ailerons are backwards, you just touch the slider. It will go to orange. Now it's reversed. You push it again, it goes to normal. Travel, that's your overall travel. So that has 100 for default, which allows you to have the full range of travel. 
you lower it down if you want to lower the overall travel. Then you have sub trim that allows you to center your servo by adjusting the sub trim. That doesn't affect your normal trims on the first page. Speed you can either speed up or slow down your servo. Absolute travel. Absolute travel means it limits the amount of travel on a channel taking into account all combinations of settings, travel, trims, rates, etc. The IX-14 will not drive the output past the absolute travel limit. So basically what that does is keeps the servo from being overdriven and keeps it from binding. Then you have names here. You've got your abbreviations on the left and the names on the right. You could change that if you wanted to. Example, channel 6 auxiliary 1. If you wanted to go into that and change this to flaps on the right by double tapping, you can go in here and put, for example, flaps. Just click done and it will change it on there. Balance. Balance is an adjustable curve on all channels to fine tune the servo position up to seven points along the curve. So, what this does allows you to reduce the effect of round servo horns prevent binding if you've got multiple servos on a single control surface, matches throttle response on twin engine aircraft, and ensures the swash plate on a helicopter remains level throughout the range of travel. So you can just several things in this menu. You will notice we got throttle cut. Throttle cut, you can go in and push the button. It will say inhibited. I'm going to put it on H. So instead of scrolling down through the screen, which you can do by selecting the button here, you can go to the switch up top and just toggle the switch, and it will automatically assign that switch. The highlighted number is when it's active. So right now on position one, switch H is up. That's when the motor will be shut off. We push it down, you'll notice it's on position zero, which is white. That means that the motor is on. Go to this menu. Next is mixing. You have two preset ones in rudder to elevator and aileron, and aileron to rudder mix. And then you also have some free mixes at the bottom. These can be made to all different kinds of configurations. If you want to see more about that, Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have a mixing tutorial down the road. That way you will know firsthand how to make your own custom mixes and configure different things the way that you want for the aircraft. Just going to scroll back here. Down at the bottom you got sequencer. You'll notice some items already on the screen there, but none of the switches have been assigned. Some airplanes already come with sequencers built in, and actually most of the pre-built planes, bind and flies, and plug and plays, when they have gear doors or you know a function that it wants to do automatically, they will have a built-in sequencer. You don't need to use this. However, some planes don't, or if you want to remove some of the wiring or extra components, you can do the sequencer in the radio. Dual Race and Expo. This is where you can put on a two or three position switch and change the different rates that your control services move. Example here we've got aileron 85%. So that means it will move 85% of the total travel. This is how you can adjust planes to make them softer or more aggressive on the controls. Exponential is going to put a curve in the middle. So it doesn't affect the outside, it just affects the middle of the stick movement depending on how much expo you've added. I'll get more into that at a later time. I'm going to have a dual rate and expo tutorial that will go in discussion of how to set everything up and also how to adjust the different rates so that you can make your airplane perform the way that you want based upon your preference or style of flying. Throttle curve. Throttle curve can be used to 
soften or make the throttle more aggressive because this number can be raised up or down. More used on helicopters, however, there may be certain situations, airplanes that you may use that as well. Forward programming. It will connect to the receiver and you got to have the throttle cut on to activate this menu. You'll have gyro and other settings. And if it's a fresh setup receiver, we'll say first time setup. I'm going to have a complete walkthrough of setting up a AS3X receiver. So we'll do that in another video. If you want to see that one, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Video TX is going to be for FPV setup. You'll have different settings in here that you can change. And also different functions that you can use for video transmission on FPV setups. So that gives you a walkthrough of the main menu and also the model adjust menu. If you enjoyed the video today or learned something new, go ahead and push like on the video. If you want to see future videos, subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you on the next one.